Hi, welcome back. And if you're just joining us, you're welcome to be our guest on Galaxy Television. And this particular segment right here is WhatsApp. Okay, so like I was saying before, Happy New Year to you all. Do you know what it is for you to see 2024? A lot of people died last night. Even this morning as we speak, there are some people that have died. But you are here watching me, so you have to give glory and thanks to God. Okay? So before we went on a break, I said we have our Zoom guest, all right? So let me just read his profile briefly before you get to meeting, okay? So we have Davison Izegegbe, DGN. He's a filmmaker, a stage director, and artist, manager, poet, writer, and a media film consultant, all right? So he came into full practice as a movie director in 1992 and debuted with the movies Double Trouble, followed by No Way Out, with actors like Hilda Dokubo, AGK Metusela, etc., etc. He has directed over 100 movies in Benin and English language, including a first ever documentary drama on a Nigerian governor, Comrade Adams Oshomole, titled defense of a mandate. He has directed stage productions for Edo State in Nafest in Oweri, Benue, Calabar, Lagos, as well as for corporate organizations. He is um, CEO of Broad Sides Productions Company and has trained numerous artists through his in-house film school, Broad Sides Academy. He has directed television drama, which includes Trials of Equasi, forgive me, um, Pre-Justice for NTA Benin and the first to be on network from Edo State. Other TV drama series, Fight Against Illegal Migration and for the Rights of the Girl Child include Dignity of a Woman, Woes, Lost Treasures and numerous short movies on gender issues as well as Fight Against Trafficking in persons. Recently, he wrote and directed The Falling Star, a production on migrants as a tour production for ETAT and also staged in Edo State Edo Fest and also performed before IOM, European Union Ambassadors and Dignitaries in Abuja. His recent movies directed by himself but yet to be released are Ogidon as well as Holy Ghost. He is an inducted associate fellow of International Strategic Management Institute, ISMI, yeah, and holds diplomas in theater arts, mass communication, cinematography, degree in mass communication, an MA student, and Presently, the Edo State Chairman of Directors Guild of Nigerian DGM. He is a researcher and open to ideas. Okay, so we have Davison Izega. Do we have him online right now? Uh, hi. I'm here. Hi, Happy New Year. Good morning. Good morning, Happy New Year. How are you? And Happy New Year to you. <laughs> I'm good. And you? All right. Okay. So you're welcome and thank you for giving us your time. All right. So I'll just allow my co presenter do the honors by asking you the first two questions. All right. Okay. All right. Um, good morning to you again. And um, I'd say um, Happy New Year. You're welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Happy New Year to you. Hello. You, you came you came in here with a very lovely smile. Kudos to you for that one. You're, you're happy to be in the year 2024. <laughs> yeah, it's a new year, so we have to start on the very on the on the, on the right foot. You know. <laughs> true. It's my true. Well All right. This year. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, first question I'd like to ask is, I want you to tell us um, how we all began and how did you get into production and what were the challenges you faced then when you got into production yeah um 
you know, like most of uh, my contemporaries, you know, we all uh, started from NTA, not as staff, but as uh, talent, you know, in various programs. And uh, it was uh, quite, uh, <laughs> you know, lovely seeing a lot of guys, you know, especially the crew, going about the, the I mean, the, the, uh, putting up the set, you know, arranging the cameras, the mics and all that. It was quite thrilling, you know. And that was where the interest built up. And uh, I will let you know that uh, my uh, first training, you know, unofficially was uh, from NTA, NTA Benin. You know, and uh, from there we ventured into uh, production to see how it goes. And uh, that was in 1993 with uh, Double Trouble, shot on high band you it then. <laughs> you know, it was a lovely experience, you know, and that was how the journey started. And uh, from that to now, it's been quite interesting and uh, never looking back, you know, except when I want to look at where I started from, which was uh, from NTA and uh, my first debut with uh, even same camera from NTA. Because <laughs> they had the best cameras as, as a then, you know, the high band, the umatic uh, cameras, you know. <laughs> and the beginning seems like... Um something that you really really enjoyed and i'm glad you did that you spoke about cameras yeah. that you used then and now you also spoke about the challenges you faced then and now and um, which brings me to the second question i'm about to ask you now you direct um stage and of course screenplay which one do you feel yeah. most comfortable with which one are you most comfortable with because um personally i schooled in benin all right benson Idausa, and um, i did a lot of stage plays wow. I, I know sometimes it can be very hard, yes, it can be very hard to shoot stage plays, um, especially the fact that we have to rehearse and rehearse, so many cuts, take, shoot and all that. So um, I want to gather such, exp yes, I want to gather such experience um, um, coming from a legend, a veteran, someone who's been there for as long as we can remember. I want to know which one you, you're most comfortable with and which one seems like the hardest well, uh, both come with different challenges and they both also come with different experiences. You know, for the stage, you know, you are dealing with the human's uh, life and uh, it takes quite a couple of time, you know, getting them into, uh, up, getting them into characters, you know, because it's stage, any little mistake, you know, it goes along with the production. And again, too, you are performing before a live audience. You know, so his own uh, challenges are quite uh, unique, and uh, his uh, the expectation from from uh, stage production too is also quite unique because the scenery, the lights, everything is you, you are having your sound everything at the same time seamlessly. You know, when you watch stage production, it looks like you know people never rehearse, like just something that just came out effortlessly, but yeah. the. Uh, energy put into that stage production is quite, you know, huge, you know, and uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, the persons that are supposed to be participatory, you know, are the peasants, and most of them, when I mean the peasants, I mean in quote, I mean uh, those uh, below average, you know, uh, and they are always in the market, you know, selling their goods, some uh, artisans, and quite a lot of them, you know, so they don't uh, find it very comfortable, you know, uh, leaving their businesses to become an audience in stage production. Except when you take these productions to them as a community theater or educational theater. So most of the time, stage production, you know, it's like you 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 performing for the uh, elites. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Those who just want to, who have value for what uh, you know, uh, a stage production is uh, is like, you know. But for the Film business, you know, is something you, you know, you do your rehearsals quietly, you do your shooting quietly. People are not part of what you're doing apart from your cast and crew. After editing, what the audience see is a finished product. Either they are in the cinema watching it, or like we used to have it as a home video, they are watching it in their various homes or on screen. You know, so wherever they are, even thank God for the handset, they can watch. Via YouTube, any anywhere they find themselves, whether in the marketplace or whatever they are, they can watch. But for stage production, they have to leave what they are doing and be part of uh, the the performance, you know, as an audience. So both of them are quite, like I said earlier, they are quite unique, you know, form of uh, a presentation, you know. But like I will tell you, 
uh, both are just something that I love doing. You understand? So I would say that I love one above the other because they are both mm-hmm. part of our lives, you know. And uh, luckily for me, I also studied mass and uh, theater arts, you know. And uh, oh, wow. you should know what it's like. <laughs> so it's a feel that you just can't let go, you know. But it's just because um, it is a more time, it's quite a time consuming. And having right talent, you know, to act for the stage is a bit scarce, you know. So it takes quite some time, you know, to get that done. And uh, it's quite also expensive. People think that it's just like, oh, fine, just bring the, do the set, do that and all that. So but it's quite expensive. So when I, I see every stage production, you know, I give kudos to the to the director. I give kudos to the sponsors because it costs quite a whole lot of money. Just also like film production. The only difference is that they have two uh, various uh, uh, medium for presentation. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now, <laughs> do you think um, do you think stage production is fading out for the screen in Nigeria? And if yes, how do we reverse the trend? Uh, I think even if we look at uh, the school curriculum, you discover that. Uh, most theater uh, departments are having lesser students compared to other departments. And I think I've been, I've read this, you know, uh, you know, before most of my friends who are lecturers, that uh, what's going on? If it's possible for them to probably uh, change the curriculum or probably call the depart- department, maybe the uh, Department of uh, uh, Performing Arts and uh, Film Production, I don't know, you can merge both mm. because even in theater arts, you study uh, media. And in media, you study the placement of cameras, microphones, and all that. So I strongly believe that you know, there can be a merger between the theater and the, and the, and the film and performance. Because now, thinking about uh, 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 turning the stage production, applying media into stage production. So the two are like, uh, for now, they are like separate couples. But I feel strongly that uh, they can be merged together as a department so they can have more persons, you know, seeing the need to study the court. Because now, most of the graduates from the theater department, you know, they enjoy it why they are having various performances in the school. Or a few of them who are lucky enough to be involved in one or two stage productions outside the school. But how many times in the year do you see productions around the country? You know, like when I was growing up then, uh, we used to watch uh, Hibat uh, 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 mm. uh, production, but not on stage. Yeah. They, they brought it to us right at our doorstep. You know, it was a mobile uh, performance, you understand what I'm saying? But that mm. is long gone now. We don't see that anymore. So the, the, the theater is able to go to, to watch this production. So I strongly feel that, you know, the interest for film production is uh, quite on the increase compared to that of the stage. Even now, I have some friends who put up stage production. I know the effort they put in to publicity just to have the whole, you know, uh, a field for a performance, you know. But for film production, if I just read a little skit that I did on on, the, on social media, before you know it, you'll be having a one thousand and above views within the, just a short yeah. uh, a minute. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I mm-hmm. feel that the theater department, I mean, the the modus operandi of the theater department should be revisited and uh, mm-hmm. merge it with uh, with a film production so that the interest can build up and then. Um, we can also, like a friend, like a lecturer to me some years ago, you know, that the difference between the theater and the stage is that, and, and the film is that uh, the film records the theater, you know, even though I know I, I didn't agree with that anyway. But again, mm-hmm. the point is that, you know, the theater and the film, they are like Siamese twins with just very little uh, differences. Oh, differences. You know? All right. Thank you very much. Okay. So let's go to the new film industry. Um, the Benin film industry is no longer a baby. If you are to compare the quality of Benin film with its contemporaries, do you think you're doing enough? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can proudly say yes and over again, yes. But remember how we started the Benin film industry? Yeah, um, we started shooting on, uh, on, uh, uh, on VHS to Super VHS, Digital uh, 8, Digital i8, uh, yeah. Mini DV, DV, yeah. you know, and now we are, where we are, we shoot on red, 
You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Shoot on wow. red, shoot on the black Good. magic. I'm talking about Bini movies. Mm -hmm. I remember a movie I was uh, an assistant director to, directed by uh, Pedro Cow. Uh, Agbonaye, yeah, that's the title. Agbon, Agbonaye is the title of that movie. It was premiered in the faraway US, in fact, in Warner Bros. Studio. Wow. Shot on red. Mm -hmm. So, the Benin industry, the Benin film uh, industry has really grown in terms <laughs> of quality and sound. Um, yeah. That doesn't mean that we still don't have some persons who uh, see shoot on the lower budget because. Uh, a lower budget definitely not give you uh, what exactly you might be aiming for. But presently, most of us, if we are to shoot our uh, mini movies, we shoot on either black magic or we shoot on the, on red and we shoot on 4K, you know. And uh, even my last movie, uh, Ogidiga, you know, uh, it's a mini story with parts. Uh, uh, um, part of the uh, language in Benin and the other part in English, it was also shot on the on the on 4K, you know. So that is the, the, the industry has really advanced here, and so are the actors. I would like to you, but again, you know that like I, like uh, some of us, like my colleague that stood in Benin, we tell you that uh, the other people were naturally proud. You understand? What I'm saying we feel that we have it all. And we feel that uh, we don't need anybody to come, <laughs> come and uh, uh, force us to do what we need to do. So we spend our money, we spend our time, we try to get it right. And as I speak with you, presently, Rock is shooting most of their movies in Benin. And if you, mm. if you, if you have a, I mean, if you have a discourse with us, she will tell you, you know, or if the directors who are working on that Rock will tell you the kind of talents they meet here in Benin. You know, so the industry has really, really, really grown. People are now studying cinematography, studying filmmaking, studying all parts of even the light uh, uh, costume and all that. You know, mm. so and it will be it, it will surprise you know that even the, the president of uh, the uh, uh, Creative Designers Guild is there. In fact, from uh, us, they are the from the two states here, and these are persons who are very fast in uh, in scenery, in costume. Makeup and all that, you know, who's good up uh, within and outside the country, you know. So, a uh, whole industry has really grown. So, now, if you must make a movie in the name in the new state, you have to like sit down on your drawing board, you know, and make, ensure you, you cross your teeth and you dot your eyes because the audience, too, mm -hmm. are extremely critical of what you do and what you put yeah. out there for them to watch. Hey, um, before we went on a break, we just saw a um, movie called Ogidi Don, right? So, Miss Davis, o Ogidi Da, all right. So, before we start, eh, the director of my director said, I should tell you, is Selobe, right? Is Selobe. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> all I right. Peace. Thank you very much. All right, so tell us about the movie. Oh, the movie. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, the movie is, uh, is um, uh, a whole long uh, historical piece that uh, we all grew up in Benin and uh, we were taught in our his history uh, 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 school, you know, years back. It's a story about um, two princes. Who, were, who had uh, issues with um, the kingdom and uh, they were banished and uh, along the line um, they, they decided to, I think they, they, along the line uh, the younger brother you know uh, was caught while they were wandering and he was uh, asked okay. where is your senior brother and he lied that his brother is dead and he was drowned in the and that got his senior brother infuriated and the war ensued between both of them and uh, with the help of a motor the rightful heir to the throne, you know, uh, won via battle and uh, got the throne back. That's just a summary of the story. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so Ali? Yes, um, I want to ask this question. For yeah. um, a couple of um, people um, who are from Edo State Benin, to be precise, now I know the cultural terrain and um, um, how it is over there can be really strict especially when it comes to anything related to the um the above benin now i know um for example there was a time we we were doing a cultural carnival in school and it's customary yeah. in the benin culture for the oba to throw 
is it the Oba or one of the chiefs? I can't remember, but there's someone who throws the staff. You throw it to the air okay, and you yeah, catch it. You're supposed to Call do it three them. times. <laughs> now, it's often said that if that staff falls to the ground, that um, that person has to be killed. So, even when it comes to when we are doing our traditional night, this, this one is very big and huge. You see that when he throws it up and catches it, um, you see everybody shout. Um, I'm just talking about the revered culture of the Bini people. Now, it, shooting movies in Edo States, um, when it comes to culture and film, um, I want to know how you are able to blend it properly without causing any form of rifle, all right? Because it can be very hard, trust me when I tell you. Um, people don't joke with their culture, especially in Benin. So I want to know the relativity, how you're able to manage, how you're able to merge um, all these things together to, to be as successful as you are now. Well, like I said earlier on, if you remember, I, I was born here in Benin. I grew up here in Benin. My primary, my secondary, my university, all done here in Benin, you know. And uh, again, I, let me shock you. I went to international primary school, uh, called it Bissama Primary School, that has its own history, has to do with the wood carving. Just like you have the Igbo that has to do with the bronze carving. So while in primary school, we're taught about our history, we taught about the taboos and all that. So you don't even need to be a native for you to know this if you went through the primary, secondary school or you even grew up here in Benin, you know. So, you know, our culture is a way of, it's a way of the people, you understand what I'm saying? So this was what we all grew up with. So there's none of us that want to make a movie and uh, want to deviate from the norms and begin to uh, do what is not right culturally. You understand what I'm saying? So no matter how, even if you want to do it, say, film for film's sake, no, still, you must remember your roots, where you're coming from. Because um, the identity of an Edo man is the upper of Benin. That's your identity. So if you don't revel that, then you are nobody's like, <laughs> they, they, they would say, a non-living thing. Let me use that word in quote. You understand what I'm saying? So, Whenever we're making our movies, whether on uh, movies or whether stage production, these are the things we don't toy with. The crown, the beads, proper usage, usage of the beads, the ebon, that is the uh, the sword. You know, we don't you must you must be held properly by the servants and all that. You know, the costume, the, 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 the costume for the king and for the chief, you must get it right. If you are shooting a movie that has that, that that is periodic, you have to do your research properly so that you don't go and start because we all know that every chief wear uh, what they call the akpata. You know that is, you have the half a uh, little hair from this point down here. It began at a particular period in time. It does not be there all through. So when you're going to do anything that has to do with um, the Bene culture, the Edo culture. You must devote time to research, ask questions, and ensure that you get it right. Once you get it right, the people will always appraise your work. They will, they will appraise you for doing it right. Even uh, outside the industry, I don't think there's any culture in the world that would appraise your work that rubbish their entire existence as a people, you know? So that is how it's been, you know? And so we've been doing quite well in that aspect, you know? We all do critics of our works. You know, when you finish a job and uh, your colleagues, are, they may just say, ah, but that bid was not properly worn on that person. Say, ah, how, what happened? They tell you, you go back to the city and you, or you go back to the location and you shoot that particular scene. You just have to get it right. Even apart from that, even language, language, even the food and stuff like that, they are all part of what makes us uh, a people. And we enjoy being in that uh, terrain. It's a lovely experience. It still is. We are proud to be Edo people. Very, very proud to be Edo people. <laughs> More question, and then Queen can take that away. Um, sexual harassment doesn't have to be only um, cases of directors. Now, we've had cases of directors um, asking sexual favor from wannabe actresses. We have had cases of actresses offering directors sexual favor to get roles. We want to know, um, do this um, 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 kinds of situations, do they still exist? And if they do, how 
um, how do we curb them? That's number one. Um, number two, have you ever been a victim of or have you had any experience like that? We need you to shed more light on this. Well, uh, I think uh, when it comes to issues that has to do with uh, sexual harassment, whether from the male or the female, I think it cuts across all sectors, whether the medical field, whether the engineering field, whether the nursing field, health profession. You, you know, as long as you have humans and not robots occupying or working in these sectors, you are bound to see the good, the bad, and the ugly. That is the truth. And uh, when you find yourself working in any of these environments, all you need to do is just be self-discipline and be focused on what you do. I would like to you that uh, truly that uh, we've not had cases of uh, females complaining of uh, sexual harassment, you know, mm. not just from directors alone, even from other members of crew and even uh, colleagues as actors, you know, who probably call themselves uh, uh, veterans or stuff like that, mm. you know. Uh, but again, you also have it in a reverse form, you know, some come around and they think that, you know, the only way they can get what they want is through offering that you know it's wrong you have that in all professions you go for i mean you go for interview in some very high reputable you know organizations and uh, once you have your name shortlisted you are being harassed you know give to get this and stuff like that so it's in all profession but what we do in the film business is that the moment you uh seem to be involved in such art you know you are disciplined that's the truth. Nobody, you know, cover it up for you because it's wrong, you know, to ask that of a talent. You are supposed to be paying somebody for a job, You're supposed to pay somebody for his or her talent, and you are requesting favor in that uh, respect back from such. Is uh, I think is a call for, you know. And again, like what we do most of the time when we have persons who indulge in such art. We blacklist such persons. That's what we do. We don't waste time. We, we can't kill you. We we'll blacklist you. Nobody comes to your production. People avoid you because the moment they hear that, so oh, is that guy you once you go there. Are you ready for this? this is what he or she does. And uh, before you know it, your audition will be empty. You see people around you, mm -hmm. and uh, probably you may take your uh, such as to other profession. You understand? But the, the point is that mm -hmm. it's a problem in every sector around the world. You know, and it's not something that is quite encouraging. You know, people bring in their personal problems, their personal attitude, uh, their personal upbringing, you know, into uh, noble professions and uh, try to dent the image of uh, a profession, you know, built over the years by persons who believe in such. So it's not something that should be, that should be encouraged. I think that we are fighting and we are still fighting it, you know. But I would, if you notice, it's once in a while. Once you hear, once it's like that comes up now. If talk, if it's still like that comes up, like before you know it, it's all over the social media, and you would think that it's something that happens on a daily basis. You know, that's letting you that is uh, almost uh, fading out to its time. People that are involved in such uh, nefarious art are find themselves out of this profession and other profession. And again, too, the film business is such that you know, like. You know, it's open to everybody. You know, so most of the time you don't know who a person is in terms of background check until they begin to exhibit such characters or such traits. And you know that there's no, no matter how long you try to hide a particular character, to just it, it, it just for a while. It was definitely, you know, where he said, "Oh, you know, you can't run from that." So these are some of the things that uh, we rely on rely on you know passion, I mean uh, 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 getting the uh, first time information about such art and we also apply discipline in various uh, ways you know to address such issues all right thank you very much so what surprises do you have for us 2024 and um, are there going to be any stage play this year from you well, uh, for me, presently, uh, if I'm involved in stage productions, there are productions I'm commissioned to do. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't put my money in stage productions. I'm sorry I'm saying this, but the fact that if I have uh, a sponsors, why not? If I'm commissioned to uh, handle a stage production, why not? 
you know it's something that is just it has it, its own beauty it's just something you know way out of this world you know but it costs quite a whole lot to have that something out of this world you know via stage production you know but for 2024 if i have sponsors why not i'll do that you know so that is among uh, uh, part of what i want to do you know for the year if uh, all things been equal and uh, as well as for film production as i speak with you i'm doing a collaboration with uh, the film maker in ghana i'll be getting the uh, set by february yeah early february so by this month we start the preliminary works and all that audition you know casting rehearsals and all that stuff getting equipment and all that paid for and stuff like that so this year is going to be a very busy year and uh, Ogidiga will be premiered this same year you know so it's quite it's going to be a very busy year you know i, I think it has already started you know, via this program now this is a busy time so it's a busy year this year <laughs> <laughs> okay all right nice one okay so quickly tell us uh what do you do when you're not working what do you do to relax yourself when you're not working well i i i play a lot you know i grew up as a kid i, I can tell a lot. from the way you smile, you, smile my <laughs> you love smiling <laughs> You know, I grew up as a plain kid, right from my primary, you know, even up to now. So when I'm not working, I'm playing. And I play with my kids or play with my friends, you know, on my phone or WhatsApp, watching skits or writing scripts. So yeah, I do that a lot. Even on my phone, my all my gadgets are all having a, a Microsoft Word. Anywhere I am, if anything catches my function, I immediately script it down. I mean, I put it down and uh, style it to work, you know, just to get me involved in that. And I do research a lot too, you know, I'm into research and all that. So most of that I can just drive around, you know, to any busy area, park by the roadside. I just watch, you know, uh, people go by and uh, I thought you spent five minutes. I think you have watched a movie you can never find on Netflix or any other <laughs> bigger platform. But you see people with different problems, some are happy, mm -hmm. some are sad, some are going about their businesses, or the, mm -hmm. the tasks are arousing that. In fact, it's a whole, in fact, the slice of life you see in a movie, you see it in real time when you find yourself in this busy area. So I, I always catch my phone and I hang out with friends too, you know, and it's, I don't have no dumb moments, seriously. I play a lot. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So now I would love to test the Benin food i have never tested Benin food before so give me two wow. recommend two for me oh well if you enter if you've been there i will advise you ask for a uh, plantain and what i love that, I love that. plantain unripe plantain and owo you know the robo have their own they call the robo have their, they call it owo too for us yes, it's yes. different that's not the same uh, style in preparation ask oh. for uh okay Benin for plantain i'll get there yeah, or get the Anowu. Then uh, we have the black soup, fantastic. You know, we have the black soup, you know, we don't play with that too. You know. We have quite uh, very rich uh, uh, traditional uh, uh, food here in Benin. You know, for plantain and uh, and uh, Owu, you know, with uh, with uh, crayfish and uh, snail and uh, boga or <laughs> some dry fish, wow. You you just you, once you start with that you you wouldn't want to stop it you know. <laughs> All right, thank you very very much. All right, so um, give us your fans and the people watching you right now. Give them a few words of encouragement. Well, I would just say that uh, they should endeavor to stay alive, do the right thing at the right time, be positive in everything you do. Don't ever compete with others. Compete with yourself. You know, give yourself a task and ensure you, you stick to it you know don't be jealous or envious of those who are steps ahead of you no you don't know what they went through to get there so instead of being envious get close to them learn from them and improve on yourself improvement is very vital for survival you know that's my All advice right. so let's have your social media handles quickly social media handles please. oh well uh, my uh, my Instagram is at Davidson is and uh, my social uh, my Facebook is Miss Davidson. You know, it's there. Davidson is Zegagbe. Davidson is Zegagbe. Davidson Mosime is All on Facebook page and on Facebook. Then on TikTok, it's still at Davidson is Zegagbe. You know? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank
But then once you just Google the name, everything will pop up. It'll pop up, yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you very, very much. It was nice having you right here on the show. Thank you so much and have a lovely, lovely new year. All right? Thank um, you so much. Same, yeah, same, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> all, right, all right. There we have David Izegagbe. Are we? Or are you there pronounce it well? No, it's man Izegagbe. But you're school there now. Doesn't mean I can pronounce it. So you cannot anything. pronounce it. But when I said recommend, uh, uh, um, um, what do you call it, food for me, he quickly said black soup. Because I eat those, I eat those, I eat um, okra that you, the, their kind of okra is actually very sweet because you have to mix it, you put it in clay pots and then it steams on the fire. Then you now eat it with better fufu. Mm. I mean, foodie, that's all I know. You need to go to Benin and go and eat. You know you're hungry. Mm. I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat. <laughs> 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 All right, here we have David Ezegabe. I learned a lot about the Benin movie, their culture, and everything. And I hope you learned from it too. All right, so we'll just take a quick